And our second scripture reading today is chapter 3 in Paul's letter to the Galatians. Apostle Paul writes, Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized in Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I may have already said this once or twice this morning, but happy Reformation Sunday. May God's grace fill your hearts with faith, now and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate 506 years of Luther's Reformation, a day that we hold in remembrance for the boldness of Martin Luther. In his way, his words etched the newness of church in this faith life. Faith was at the heart of Luther's movement. Luther said this when asked to describe what faith is. Faith is a living, bold trust in God's grace, so certain of God's favor that it would risk death a thousand times trusting in it. Such confidence and knowledge of God's grace makes you happy, joyful, and bold in your relationship to God and all creatures. This level of trust and confidence is not natural for us. It's an action that, that tends to lead others to question us a lot. And, and to make people wonder what this whole faith thing is about. So I was thinking today, I was reminded of my time um, at, up in Essential Health doing my CPE, my clinical pastoral training, with the chaplaincy part of what you have to do through seminary. And as much as I was learning what it means to visit with people in the hospital and be with families in their times of need and how to respond and everything like that, I spent just as much time, if not more, defending myself. From the busyness of my schedule to the way I conducted my life, my group mates constantly were calling me out in different aspects. We had to do a lot of self-reflection and we had to talk about it and write about it and, in a sense, defend where we were at and things. But what really sticks out to me the most is when we came to our midterm. Our midterm, we had to evaluate ourselves in this chaplaincy process and in our own walks of faith and what, where we were going. And we had to share what we wrote about ourselves with our group. Now in our group, there was, there was three of us total. There was me on my way to be a pastor and the other two that were working to become hospital, hospital chaplains. So I was, only, I was the only one on the pastoral track, which is a little different than your hospital chaplains. But anyways, it got to be my time to give my evaluation. And part of that was I had to describe my life and where things were at. So, you know, I put out there the six kids, the full-time student, the on-call chaplaincy for the class, the guest preaching at one church that I was doing at the time and the working full-time at another church. And yeah, my plate was full. 
And my group mates made sure to call me out on how full my plate was. And they made comments on things like I was wearing myself too thin and I needed to give myself more time for me and I was going to be burnt out. My response back to them with those questions was, I have faith that God will give me all the energy I need and will give me rest when I need rest. That's what my God will do for me. This quickly turned that conversation into a confrontation. There was so much disbelief, disbelief that it almost turned to a shameful moment. That they were trying to shame me for putting so much faith into the busyness of my life into God. And it didn't take long for my blood to start really boiling and for me to get ready to scream and holler and throw a fit because that's you know what you do when you get angry. And I stood up and I said, we need to take a break. But before I walk out the door for a moment, I want you all to understand one thing. My faith is not up to you to dictate. I know with all my heart, with all my soul, my mind, and my body that God is and always will provide me with everything I need. I don't understand it most days, and I don't expect you to understand it. However, God is my driving force, and I will always cling to that. Please excuse me. And I walked out the room, and I let them think about that. I went and splashed water on my face and calmed myself down, so I, I didn't get in trouble or get kicked out of the class and have to retake it. And the most beautiful thing was when I came back into the room. And I came back into the room, and it wasn't apologies. It wasn't ready to continue the argument. It was genuine and sincere questions on... Can you explain this faith a little bit more? How, how do you wake up every morning and just let God decide what you're going to do? It was a great conversation that really etched in what it means to live a faithful life deep into our souls. And we stand here today and we sit here and we listen to these words and we, we sing these beautiful songs and we remember Luther do you ever think what we're saying and what we're, think and what we're singing? We're singing about God's strong might being by our side and our hope built on Christ Jesus and how much love that we feel from Jesus. We call out to God to take our lives and make them his. It's powerful. And our last song that we get to today is going to be a prayer for our faith to look up to God's glory, to be filled. Oh, it's so beautiful. Faith is such a beautiful picture. And it's such a guiding light and it's empowering and freeing all in one. In God's word, with Christ's grace, through the Holy Spirit's breath, we are free to live a faithful life with joy and willingness to serve and love others to suffer all things and to love and praise God that's the heart of reformation that we are saved by grace through faith faith that is like the hand that leads us to the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ Faith that is planted into our souls and grows in response to God's blessings. We cannot do anything to earn this salvation. It was born into us, and it is always part of us. From the beginning of creation, God blessed us with faith. Not something for us to obtain or retain or compete for but woven in to our beings. And Jesus Christ came along and he amplified that blessing by fulfilling our hearts and souls with unending grace and salvation, forgiveness of sins. 
bringing us the Holy Spirit to motivate our hearts to live this blessed life full of faith and grace. We remember today that we love because God loved us first. That's faith. We serve because Jesus served us in giving himself on the cross for our forgiveness of sins. That's faith. And we celebrate Luther's Reformation every year to bring ourselves right back to this place to remember what it means to have faith and to live life in faith. To put aside our own accord and to let God guide our ways. Let God bring us to the places where God wants us to go. Let us go to the people that God wants us to go to and love. Let God tell us where to serve and how to serve where God wants us to serve. And to forgive as God forgives. No matter our schedules, no matter how busy or crazy life is, to lean into the trust and the faith that God's got your back. Let God direct you and let your life be filled with the call that only God can bring onto your hearts. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is Take My Life That I May Be. And I invite you to stand today. <laughs> 